All right, so welcome again. My name is Mike Bernache, and it's, uh, I'm really, really excited to take you through a little bit of what's new in Cognos 12. All right, so in summary, Cognos 12 is divided into three areas. How many of you, you know, one to 10, have trouble with self-service in Cognos Analytics today? A one, where it's awful, I can't do anything. A 10, hey, I can use it perfectly. It's great for self-service. You can throw that in there and I'm gonna keep going. So increased productivity within Cognos 12 is, is really, really great. Um, it's really AI driven, a lot of self-service analytics. Um, you'll see in the demo as I get started, it's really driving the end user to get answers and insights very, very quickly. So whether you are a 25 year user like William or somebody who's only used the product for six, seven, eight months, uh, I think you're going to see that this self-service uh, inside of Cognos 12 is, is to the forefront. And, and IBM has done a, a really an excellent job of putting that right right at the beginning. The performance has improved significantly. Think about, you know, even if you came from Cognos 10 to 11 and then 11, 1, 11, 2, uh, the performance improvements that were made uh, in terms of dashboards, especially from 11, 0 to like 11, 1, 7, pretty significant, but it wasn't fast enough. Uh, inside of Cognos 12, they've included this new caching technology that pretty much makes everything instant. So if once it loads and once it's cached, you can filter on um, different things and it instantly comes up very, very quickly. Um, and we'll show that here shortly. And then as a little bit about productivity, but to be able to, to build dashboards very, very quickly now. Um, again, that's that, that as I start, you know, where do I go? How do I do it? And, and what's at the forefront of Cognos 12 is that ability to get started and really create a dashboard very, very quickly. So those are your three main summaries. All right, so in Cognos 12, it all starts with the assistant. Um, and we'll log in and show this. Once you get onto the welcome page, you know where to go. Um, right now, think about it. I log into Cognos 11 and I'm kind of like, well, I'm not really sure where I go. Do I do this? Do I click here? What do I do here? This basically starts now with the assistant and the assistant drives everything. Um, you can do so much through this. You can load up, find and load up data. You can ask just very general questions um, based on that data. It will start to suggest items in terms of, hey, maybe we want to look at these reports or these visualizations. It'll start to provide you insights. Um, and this is all stuff we'll go through. But really, the point is, is once you log in, it tells you where to start. All right, so you'll see, as I talked about, you get into, into Cognos 12, and the first thing you see is, is the biggest system across the top. You still have your hamburger menu that has your new and your content and all that good stuff, but I really don't need it to start. Um, I can simply start by just asking a question or simply loading data. So as I put in load data, you'll see that it's giving me some examples of what I might wanna see. And maybe I just need to see, um, we'll just call it website data and hit the enter button. It takes me to this screen. And this is kind of your main assistant screen now. And you'll see at the bottom, it said, oh, well, here's the data sources I found that has website data in it. So I don't even, I didn't even need to use the data source. I could just simply now type it in Find, or find the data source, I could simply now type it in and boom, I found the data source, I can click it. And now what it's gonna do is start to load that data. And you'll see now that our data is loaded up top with our website data. And then it starts driving more information about, okay, here's some of the relevant fields that we have inside of this data source. So again, Think about being brand new to this. I don't really know where the data is. I'm not really sure where to start. The system is now guiding you with that self-service to get to get started. Um, really, really powerful in my mind. The other thing that's been really improved from a get started standpoint is, is maybe I just, I have a Excel file, you know, your manager came to you, think about, you know, somebody came to you and said, hey, this isn't in our data warehouse, but I really want to see some analysis on this data. Can you, can you put something together for me? And 
And prior to that, it may have been like, oh, well, let me give it a shot. Now it's very easy. You know, your first item here is to upload data, or you can create content from existing data. We're just going to upload something and we're going to add a file. I just have a, a, a test data set here. And so the system's going to go through and update this. And what's great about the next step is um, once this loads up, is it starts pointing you in the right direction. So instead of having to guess where to go next, the system starts pointing you that way. So we'll hit next. Okay, I brought in some data. Do I just wanna start with the dashboard? Do I maybe wanna get some insights into that data before I do anything, right? Do I wanna create a data module or do I wanna create an exploration? So it, it points you in that right direction. So maybe again, brand new, let me get some insights. Let's see what let's see what the system gives me for insight. So it's going to load that data into this into the system. And again, it does the same thing, right? Here's some of your here's some of your, you know, your key fields. We can show more. So revenue and budget and rating. So let's just start seeing what happens. Let's hit show insights. And we'll show insights on revenue. And as that pulls up, AI is looking through it. It's going through the data source, and now it's going to return some information based on revenue. So it doesn't return any visualizations yet, because remember, I'm just looking for info. Where do I get started? So the release date with the lowest revenue from this time to this time, revenue dropped this much, the overall number of results. So again, it's just starting to prompt you to start thinking about your data, right? You know, it's giving you lots of information here, right? So I can click the hyperlink here that suggests questions. So now the system is going to tell me, okay, let me suggest some questions for you to ask, right? Which release date has the top revenue? Which language has the top budget? What can impact revenue? Compare revenue budget by genres. Well, let's click that. Let's see what happens. That seems interesting, doesn't it? And I chose movies because, well, who doesn't like movies? So you now see the system is generating visualizations based on the suggestions that the system made. And so we can see very, very clearly that comedy drives revenue very, very quickly versus dramas, and so on and so forth. And then you get your insights here as well. So very, very easy to get started. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to load. I created a data module. So again, I'm just typing in load and we will load up my movie data module. So I took this file and I just created a data module off of it. So for those of you new, a data module is is a, a data modeling tool. Um, Typically, before Cognos Analytics came around, and I can't remember when data modules were introduced, very early on in Cognos Analytics, um, the only way to really get data into, into Cognos was through a framework manager model, so that metadata tool. Data modules is now the web-based version of framework manager, um, but much easier to use. It has a much easier interface. It's really for taking huge, huge, bits of data from a data warehouse and shrinking it down to a more manageable module for the end user. And then from that end user, we're going to talk about this a little more in another session. Um, you can actually take pieces from that data module and create a data set that's really shrunk down, that's really quick and speedy in terms of return results. So think of, you know, your data warehouse is this big encompassing, has hundreds of tables, your framework manager models will do roughly the same thing. You could shrink it down. Um, but for the end user to use a data module, you can take that massive amount of data, shrink it down to something more manageable where maybe I'm just grabbing product and revenue information um, and then taking a data set and saying, I just want to see the last two years of that information. So that's kind of the flow of, of data inside of Cognos. I just brought up a, a sa the sample data module that I created. Um, and really what it allows you to do is, A, you can see, see your data, right? But you can format your data, you can create calculations, um, you can join it with other bits of data if I had anything else. So I, I did build, uh, join it with a calendar so I could look at relative time. 
Um, so you have that ability. Um, you can create custom tables like you could inside of Framework Manager. So I could create joined views or unions or aliases, whatever it might be. And, and then last, I can create those navigation paths. So navigation paths, for those of you who are newer, are, are the drill up and drill down capabilities that you can build in. So you'll see I've built a few navigation paths where I can go from genres to actor or actress or title to actor or actress in a visualization or a report. So if I right click on it, and I'll show you that in a minute, where you know I can go from the actress down to the movie very, very quickly. So you can do all that work inside of inside of your data modules. So again, I loaded up that data module and again, we can just start asking it questions, right? Show top 10 revenue by title. And now the system's gonna go through and take the, the words that I wrote and you'll see it's guided, right? And now I quickly have the top 10 revenues by title um, from here. I could now share this if I wanted to. Um, I don't have anything connected, but I could share it to Teams or Slack or through email. I can add this to a new dashboard and get started, right? Or I could now show related visualizations to this. So let's click that button and see what else the system's gonna give us. So now I've got rating and revenue by release date. So we can very quickly see so I hope you can see how it, this is driving self-service. You don't you don't have to be an expert. Heather has not used Cognos 12 yet, but I'm almost certain that I could hand her the spreadsheet and just from following along um, on the screen and looking at what the system is telling you to do, you could get started and start building something. I, I think they've made it that easy, to be honest. So, so let's talk. A minute, Mike, about deploying this. So, guys, mm -hmm. if you haven't heard us before, I'm a huge, huge fan of like webinars like this. Um, what we recommend anytime you're rolling out new features and functionality, we recommend that you do at least a couple live presentations like Mike's doing now um, to your audience. And that way they can ask questions, right? then by the time you've done about two or three of them, um, you pretty much know what questions they're going to ask. And we're big believers in making you scalable. You see, every time new people come on board, you don't have time to train them. Or if you are trying to take time onesie twosies, you're like honestly not able to do the fun, cool stuff. And so what we recommend that you do is you record the webinar like as a clean recording, meaning the third one you do, do it. We use Camtasia. If you guys aren't familiar with it, it's a great recording tool that you can edit. I like it because I can take out my screw ups. And so when you record it, you'll record it and incorporate in your presentation. Like you might be thinking, how do I do this? Because you got that question in a different uh, events, right? Once you record that, you then can put that on a share drive. And as people want to, to learn, you're like, hey, go watch this video. And people learn at different paces, right? You have some people you know are like, they're going to gobble this up. And you're going to have others super reluctant and scared that they're going to break it. The people that are scared can watch this video 10 times if they want to. They could pause it and click and, and be touching the system at the same time to learn it. And those people are gonna be a lot more comfortable because here's the thing, people that are slower to learn technology are afraid of looking stupid. We all are. And so what this allows them to do is have a safe environment to play and learn without, you know, people going, gosh, you know, Heather's really slow. And so we really encourage you to do that. We use Camtasia. I, I don't know if anyone else uses a different recording tool, if you can put it in chat, we've just had really good luck with Camtasia over the years. So last thing to, to go over here. So I, I created this dashboard in probably 15 minutes. It, it did not take long. Just, and I used the AI. I, it gave me certain things. Um, and I just loaded them in. It was very easy to do. But if you noticed when I opened it, it opened fast, but not as fast as as one would think it should open, right? So I'm going to now open it again. And it's basically instantaneous. That it because it, it's in that caching system and it comes back instantaneous. And you'll see as I find flip 
tabs. It's very, very quick. And now as I do a filter, so let's clear that and let's put in a new movie. Let's, uh, what do we want to do? If I'm from Detroit, we'll do eight mile. You see how quick that returned it? I mean, it it's milliseconds, how fast the filtering works. Prior to Cognos 12, that would have taken a few seconds. But just, you know, think about your end users, right, when they're filtering or they're selectoring multiple things. I, I've heard the comments before, well, it just takes forever. It, it's it's not fast. I have to wait for it to pull up. I want to be able to quickly see something. Well, you can see that because of that caching, I can click on any of these and it's instantaneous as to as to filtering and, and returning information. Back here, you'll see that this is that uh, integrated tabbing system they have in the visualizations. So I have a revenue tab, and this is one visualization on a tab. And I can switch back and forth between each of those tabs very quickly. So it saves you space in a dashboard, so you don't have to have all three of these charts in, a, in an area. Um, so just a way to, to make a dashboard look a little better and a little more efficient um, for people. Here is that navigation path. So if I click on Tom Cruise and drill down, I'm now instantly getting his movies, his top movies. Um, so you'll see Mission Impossible in this data set had the most in revenue and all the way down through it. And then we'll go back and we'll get back to that. Again, just how quick everything filters, right? If I click on different people, everything is filtering that quickly. And then in the forecasting area I talked about, this is where we can get those uh, that quick forecast. So it's using some predictive modeling in the background. And I just turned forecasting on, and you'll see that will update shortly with revenue for the next couple of years in this example. So I don't have 16 or 17 data in, but based on what's in the system, its predictive measures go through and say, here's what we predict will be 2016, 2017. And then I can also turn on some insights and see it'll show, you know, some average value or some meaningful differences very quickly. So you'll see that the average value across these years is, is this very, very quickly. And so that's just really a, a quick rundown of, of inside the dashboards. But I'm, I'm hoping that you saw from a self-service perspective, because I, I really think that's the key takeaway today, is anybody can get started in Cognos 12 now. And now by simply logging in and just clicking in the box, this starts to show you, you know, what you can do, what you should do, how to get started.